Hey everyone, before we get started with today's video, if you are a major gearhead or a huge Jeep fan, or both maybe, go check out my friends Jordan and Jacob's new YouTube channel. It's called Denim Dad Off-Road. Uh, these guys do all kinds of repairs on their off-road rigs and they vlog it right here on their new channel. So if you like watching people tear into suspension work, engine work, and everything in between, click on the link down below and go show these two gearheads some love. Oh, and also they do a lot of off-roading stuff on their channel too. Once again, the channel's called Denim Dad's Off-Road Road, go check them out. Hey, what is going on all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. A few weeks ago, Tom Peebles, the Vice President of Marketing at ABC, invited me to Orlando, Florida to tour their main office and facility, as well as an opportunity to test drive an all-electric Van Hool CX45E, which if you don't know, is an all-electric battery-powered coach bus. They flew me out to Orlando, Tom picked me up at the airport and took me to a restaurant called The Hangry Bison, which specialized in bison meat, which was freaking awesome, by the way. If you guys are down in that area, definitely go check out The Hangry Bison. The following day, I got a really great tour of the ABC facility and got to test drive not only an all-electric Van Hool motor coach, but also as a bonus, I got to test drive a double-decker Van Hool TD925, as well as an all-electric minibus. All of this was in the last video that I released, well, almost all of it. I couldn't fit all the footage I gathered while I was there, but most of what I just mentioned was in the last video. I really had to pick and choose what I wanted to show during my time there. I captured so much great footage and information while I was at ABC, I just couldn't fit it all into one video session. Now, many of you guys sent me a bunch of questions via email as well as down in the comments below after my last video released. And many of you have requested that I touch more on all the technical stuff on one of these all electric CX45E. Well, you guys are in luck because it just so happens that while I was down at ABC, I got an entire tour of the internals and guts of the all electric CX45E and how it all works by a guy named James Mora. Now, James Mora is a guy that has 20 years of experience working on diesel engines in the motor coach industry. James is now the corporate product support technician at ABC, as well as a certified expert of the all electric EV battery powered motor coach. And in today's video, we're gonna get as technical as we possibly can and take a dive into the depth and bowels of the all electric CX45E. Now just a warning guys, today's video is gonna be really heavy on the technical side of things. I wanted to satisfy all you bust nuts and geeks out there that are really heavily into the guts and gears of what drives an all electric motor coach. So without further ado, here's James. James Mora, that is, of ABC. Uh, all the all the high voltage components on our vehicle are on the left hand side and all below floor level. So there's nothing high voltage in the upper level for mm -hmm. heat or anything like that. Um, it's all down here. And this is the, uh, one of the Proterra battery strings. There's three strings on the bus. So there's another two sets of these in the back of the coach. Um, these are seried together and then they're in parallel to provide power to the coach. Uh, and it has orange cables on its high voltage. So we do training. We tell everybody don't touch orange cables, stay away from the orange cables. Um, even if the coach is completely off, just assume at all times until you put your equipment on, your safety equipment, and you've checked it with a meter that everything is, is live. Just assume it. The batteries are also thermally managed with um, coolant. And even on the hottest temperature, 105 degree day, they were running about 90 up to 96 degrees okay. Fahrenheit. So they stay pretty um, cool. Yeah, very cool. It's its own cooling system, its own heating system. It's not shared with the rest of the vehicle. So it thermally regulates it depending on what the battery needs. Um, the inverters in the front on the wall over here, they run the high voltage things like the AC compressor, the air compressor, there's a, a high voltage water pump that's also driven by these inverters. These two inverters also supply the 24 volts to the 24 volt side of the coach. It's like having two alternators on the bus essentially. The other thing that's 24 volts which draws a lot of power on the right side in the front is the power steering pump. It's not a high voltage pump, it's actually a low voltage 24 volt pump. And for some reason you lost high voltage electricity going down the road, you would still have steering with the Okay, with the it won't show the cells on it. Yeah, okay. you'll still have it. Yeah. yeah. Tesla's yeah. like that. Redundancy. Yeah. 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 
So the inner smart ass in me just wants to say, this thing runs on triple A's? Uh, I mean. close, about that size. <laughs> Thousands of them, yeah. yeah there are. Uh, this is the, the Grayson, they call it the Grayson Battery Thermal Management System. This is what controls the battery temperature. So if it was too cold out, this would heat them up. If it was too hot out, this cools them down. Uh, there's a coolant system in here, a coolant tank. Uh, this, this tank is for the bus heating system, and it's part of the tank that runs with those two big, look like uh, small hot water tanks, is because they're, uh, they generate the heat in the hot water system. So either the motor puts power into those and they generate heat, or they can run them directly and generate heat to be able to heat the bus up in the winter time. The radiators, there's actually two radiators in here. One radiator runs from the brake resistors in case there's too much excess energy coming off the drive wheels. It can remove the heat that way. The other radiator that's in here is for the drive components, like the drive motor and the auxiliary inverters. They have to have their own cooling system as well. Uh, they don't typically generate a lot of heat, but they have their own cooling system just in case. The fans that are up here, these are high voltage fans that are mounted on the door. As you can see, the orange cables. Uh, there's uh, safety switches on this door, so if you have this door open, you can't start the vehicle um, because have, of the fans. Right. Yeah. Can I touch the blade? Yeah, you can just play it, yeah. Oh, they're plastic. plastic yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, something you'll find on the tower of a computer. It's like a giant <laughs> tower. <laughs> yep. So in the compartment back here, we have the air compressors underneath this cover here. It's an Atlas Copco uh, air compressor, so there's no, uh, it's a rotary scroll air compressor. So it's very quiet and there's also no oil or anything in the compressor to, to worry about. Um, another coolant tank back here. This coolant tank is for the auxiliary, or for the drive motor and for the auxiliary inverters up front. The air conditioning side, this is the condenser we use on the regular diesel buses. It's the same exact assembly. So as far as servicing goes and parts goes, nothing's changed on this, even though it's an electric vehicle. Uh, the only thing that's really changed is that the air compressor, let's so the AC compressor here in the back now is a high voltage AC compressor. Uh, it's, a, it's a variable speed, so it adjusts depending on the load of the, of the system. Um, so it usually runs at a lower speed. It doesn't have to, it's not at the whim at the engine anymore like it used to be on a diesel vehicle. So you don't have to have a bigger pulley anymore? No, smaller you don't need pulley? a bigger pulley, smaller pulley, belt slap, you have to listen to any of that You don't have any anymore. of that? No more of that. Well, that's no fun. I know, it's very quiet. Oh. <laughs> and it's all sealed as well. There's no open areas because I know the belt driven compressors, they, over time they almost always all leak and you have to always repair them. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. None of that's an issue with this compressor here. So the air dryer is the same as it is on a regular diesel bus. It's back on right there like it is on a diesel bus as well. Uh, of course, it doesn't get used nearly as often as a diesel bus, so it's not purging all the time. The rear compartment here, there's a, there's a high voltage disconnect switch. So we're working on the vehicle. We talked a little bit before about uh, disabling the system. So okay. you would disable it here and you would lock it out here. And you would lock out the 24 volt battery, just like we would do on a What do you mean by lock it out? So you'd put a lock on here. Oh, there's, a, a, oh, there's a place, out. okay, yep, got there's it. There's actually yeah. a hole here, you put a lock on. Okay. Um, you'd pull on the side of the battery packs. There's actually, there's actually a safety uh, assembly, which we can point out on the way around. Uh, you pull those off each pack. And then you would go in here with your safety equipment on and you would check and make sure there's no power. That's when you put on the right suit. Right here, yep, right inside the box. And then once you've confirmed there's no power, you're safe to work on the vehicle. You can take the equipment off and do what you have to do at that point. Uh, the charge ports here on the right hand side, the power comes into the bottom of that box. And the last cooling system is the typical one we're used to seeing on the back of a Von Hull. Um, this cooling system is actually for the batteries. So the level of this cooling system is what keeps the batteries cool. That's part of the battery cooling side. So the charging port is a standard CCS1 uh, combo where port okay. where we plug in the vehicle to charge. This is the same charging port used on most American cars. Um, and I think even Tesla's eventually going over to it now. Um, and they're also going to have a test of supercharger stations. That they should just make USBs. In. But just like right. a USB. Yep. Everything should be USB. Yep. So it charges with DC fast charge on the two bottom ports. Uh, there's no lower level, level one or level two charging, which would normally be standard with a small vehicle. Um, and then there's just, you know, charging light to tell you what it's doing, if it's charging or not. Um, and then you can stop the charge from here, pushing this button. Uh, and if you have charge error, this will this will turn red. So while it's plugged in, if you hit stop charging, it'll stop the charge. It'll stop the charge, and when the vehicle detects that the high voltage is no longer present on the port here, the locking mechanism at the top of this will pull back, and you can take the handle out. Oh, uh, okay. For any reason, because this is this could be up right now, the charging rate's 150 kilowatts, 150,000 watts an hour, um, is the current charge rate. We're working on getting a little bit faster. And then, but what happens is if you try to pull that out and it's not, the voltage isn't gone, it could be a hazard. So yeah. you lock that in until the vehicle determines that the voltage is So you is never fine. want to force that thing yeah, out. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think you'll be able to okay. without a really big hazard. So these, these two components here, they're, they're called brake resistors. We can think of them as really just small hot water heaters. 
um, and they just have they just have a heating coil inside of them. They run high voltage to them, and then what will happen is they'll heat up the coolant. The coolant will flow through the pipes, and then you'll use it in the bus with the normal hot water valves that, that most technicians are familiar with. If you're coming down a hill and there's an excess amount of energy generated off the drive wheels, they can't go back into the batteries. Um, it'll also go into the brake resistors. So they try to do as much as possible to re regain and recuperate the any wasted heat energy into coolant. So we're used to have all those air valves and everything here. On the right-hand side, they actually just have this one component that controls all the suspension on the front axle, um, done all inside that electronic valve. The only real manual valves are for the park brake side. All the rest of that stuff that used to be underneath there is all one compact electronic controlled valve now. So. This is the power steering pump. So this is not high voltage, it's just 24 volts. Uh, there's a little inverter here to run the pump, that's why it's so quiet. Uh, it's like a three phase inverter. And then you have power steering fluid levels right here. Check the same way you would check. Yeah, the, instead of back yep. there, you're up here yep. now. That's your regular, it's a 24 volt fuse panel, just like we have on this, the regular diesel CX, except it's on, usually on the left hand side of the vehicle. They, they move it here to the right side. Now, if you had an ADA lift on this thing, it would just still go it'd back. Be right here. It'd be here. Yeah, it'd it's be midship. midship now. Yep. Okay. There's also another electrical box back there. It's the one that used to be in the floor on a regular diesel bus in the middle and the, the rear is now located right here on the, on the other side of that panel. So it's also low voltage uh, uh, battery battery box. And then your 24 volt batteries with the disconnect switch up here. Okay. So, and so this is the same thing. If you turn this off, there's a, little, there's a little hole in here that you can put a lock in. So if you're working on the vehicle on the high voltage side, you can lock it out once you've confirmed that the batteries are disabled. They so they still retain on. their same function, even yeah. though this is all electric and yeah. it's not, the regular batteries still have the same function as yes. it would on a diesel. Operate all the exterior lighting, all the ah. interior lighting, the audio video equipment, okay. um, all the suspension control stuff electronically is controlled with these batteries as well. So. This is what those solar mats would keep charged Correct. so that, yep. okay. Because yep. that inverter takes the high voltage and converts it down. Okay, to okay, this okay. If you don't have the solar on it. Got which it. Is consuming high voltage power. Typically when we do troubleshooting now, a lot of the troubleshooting is we attach, we connect to it with a, with a computer and we take what they call a cam trace now in the diagnostic plug and then they email us the cam trace and then we play it back on our computer here in Florida. Um, with that played back cam trace, we're able to see pretty much everything that's going on in the bus at the time that it happens. So um, the troubleshooting has been streamlined a little more. We don't need all different programs for for you know, for um, the transmission and then a different program for different engines and all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of it gets all done through through emails and files that way. So underneath this panel here is a very large panel in front. There's actually uh, two inverters underneath this panel that drive the, the motor itself. Okay. So because it's such a large motor, it needs two inverters to drive. Um, but this used to be the old electrical panel in the back here. Um, so now we have access to the top of the motor and that's the drive motor that runs the whole that's bus. That's the engine that drives the bus. Yep. yep. And it is so small. Yep. This is where the transmission would be on a conventional diesel yep. bus. It's, it's just a little bit forward of it because of the batteries, but I mean the drive shaft is probably, drive shaft's about this long, it goes to the rear axle. And it's a three phase permanent electric magnet motor. There's no brushes in the motor to service or anything. Um, at like a normal engine overhaul uh, time frame, we would take like the bearings and probably replace bearings, front and end bearings, um, and then check and make sure that the, the coils are good. Um, but that's that's our, our maintenance on it. Um, there's a couple of grease points on there, you grease every once in a while, um, and that's really it. What's nice about it when, when you have to work on it or troubleshoot it is usually if something doesn't work, it just doesn't work. It's not like I need to go, I need to go two hours into a trip to get the after treatment to heat up to find out that, you know, a sensor doesn't work now. Or, you know, I take it to a dealer and they change a part and then they cross their fingers and give it back to you. Um, these are, these are running or they're not running. I mean, if they don't run, you have fault codes. Uh, you know, we can do our can traces and stuff and figure out what it is um, fairly quickly and then just work from there. Disable the system, change a component if it needs to be changed. So. Very interesting. Okay, so a couple of thoughts. First of all, it was absolutely mind-blowing that I was driving a coach bus that was not using an ounce of diesel as I was cruising down the road. That thing was so quiet that sometimes I thought it had shut down, which 
made me panic a little bit. Again, as Roman, the president of ABC, mentioned in the last video, EV technology in the motor coach industry isn't quite for everyone just yet. But that doesn't mean that there won't be more changes moving forward to make it more usable for the motor coach industry. But personally, for me and the needs of Puria Charter, which is the company that I work for, the luggage space, or lack thereof, would leave a lot of my passengers sitting on the side of the road scratching their heads, as well as my drivers. And secondly, the obvious one, the range of 250 miles, give or take a few, before a three to four hour charge would just not cut it for the type of trips that uh, Puria Charter takes. But again, every company has different needs, so the EV buses may be perfect for your needs. Well, folks, I hope today's video answered all of your questions on how all the electrical systems work on a battery-powered EV coach. And once again, James Mora, thanks again for your time, as well as the tour of the EV CX45E. If you guys have the time, go check out ABC's website. Lots of good stuff on there. I'll put the link down in the description box below. If you're watching this, guys, you are part of the motor coach world. <laughs>